I read in an interview that, um, at, that Joe Baresi, he said uh, that you were very certain about each choice you made for recording the album. Were you really that certain all the time? Um, it's healthy to, to uh, at some, you know, when it comes to certain things, to have the ability uh, to go back and revert your decisions. If you, there's no point if you feel that something isn't quite right and to make it political is dangerous because some people do that. Mm -hmm. They said, okay, I want to do this. And then people will start arguing and, and then you insist that this is the best way. And for some people, mm -hmm. it will become a thing, right? Where they, even if they know at some point that this isn't right, they will stick to that because they, you know, Mm -hmm. set off in style claiming that it was the only solution yeah. so I'm not afraid of going back on decisions if I feel we can benefit from it uh, creatively or whatever mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> but certainly uh, Satyricon enters the studio well prepared and <clears throat> uh, we find that that is the way that really works for us and although there is room for uh, spontaneous decisions and things like that. Uh, pretty much got a thought through plan of what I want to do. Um, and I'm a firm believer in the choices that we've made during all these preparations before we go into the studio. Mm -hmm. So I believe what you're referring to was, I saw that interview myself. Uh, Barisi said something like, he knows what he wants. Mm -hmm. I don't want this, I do want that. Yeah. And there's no middle ground, I think something. And, and that, that is pretty much the way it is with me. But as I said, I'm flexible as well. Okay, were you under a lot of time pressure while recording it? Uh, or no, not really. I mean, there's always time pressure in the way that uh, as an artist, you would like to go on forever. You mm -hmm. know, if no one stopped me, I would probably still be in the studio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but uh, no, we in invested uh, a lot of money into this production to have that time to not feel stressed out in, in, uh, in our, um, uh, you know, it's, you, it's not nice knowing that something isn't quite right and then having to leave it and go on. So we tried to make sure that we had enough time for drums, enough time for guitars, vocals, everything. So mm -hmm. it came out pretty much, much the way we wanted it to. Okay, um, I wanted to uh, go into a specific song on the album. It's uh, called Black Crow on a Tombstone. Mm -hmm. um, can you maybe explain shortly what is the thought behind the song, lyrically? The thought behind the song, lyrically, had a little bit of a strange experience during one of our uh, songwriting camps. Uh, most of the time we spent uh, at a cabin up in the mountains, but uh, on this occasion I was with uh, uh, the guy that I worked with uh, a lot on the demo engineering, which also gave me some input on uh, arrangements, mm -hmm. and uh, stayed at his home studio. <clears throat> and there was a long night with, uh, with lots of jamming and drinking some red wine and having that kind of atmosphere, which was nice. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we went to bed, I don't know, like five or six in the morning, something like that. And I woke up really early, like four hours later, mm -hmm. which is not a nice place to be after a long night of red wine and, 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 um, and playing. So I felt pretty miserable and I came, walked into the kitchen and it was so gray and somber and just not nice at all uh, on, on the on the outside and I was just watching out the, the window and um, uh, his studio oversees a, a cemetery. And, uh, and yeah, uh, there was this uh, crow that landed uh, on a tombstone as I was watching and I was, I was paying attention to it. And it kept turning around looking at me through the window and I was going, what? What the hell did I do? <laughs> uh, and sometimes in the interaction between um, uh, humans and animals, there is some sort of, what should we say, silent communication. Yeah. yeah, you feel like you, maybe. yeah, yeah, understanding. You feel like you connect with them uh, uh -huh. at certain times. But I think it was my state of mind, how I felt right there and then, the way it determinedly looked at me again and again 
and almost pinpointed me going, you. Uh, it was a fascinating and slightly bizarre experience. So what the hell, you know, that's what artists do. Like, you know, sometimes you want to write a song about it or lyrics or whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, I used that uh, little incident as an inspiration because uh, I, we often look upon animals as uh, symbolic of uh, uh, all kinds of holy and sacrilegious things. Uh, and typically, uh, many birds have been seen as messengers. Uh, for example, ravens. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, use that a little bit for for inspiration for the lyrics.